Hari Om everyone. We'll start with a very quick prayer. Om Sada Shiva Samarambam Shankara Charya Madhyamam Asmada Charya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam Om Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, so today uh, I uh, titled my talk, Where Am I? And as I mentioned in the trailer, not a question of where I particularly am, but for us as like a whole to kind of in this collective journey to figure out where we possibly are. Uh, because there are many paths, many ashramas, many varnas, many, many different ways. However, we put, there are many dimensions to it and where we are in that particular path. So the crux of the truth, uh, the talk, is this one Vedantic truth, and all of it is just this one thing. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Jeevo Brahmaiva Napara. And other than this, there is nothing else. So, but this same particular point is also the one, how we get here is the one that's kind of giving us this many paths and options to us that we think there exists. So the first question we uh, answer is, do we consider Bhagavad Gita as a Dharma Shastram or is it a Moksha Shastram? And there should be no doubt at all. Uh, it is a Moksha Shastram. But before that, like the Vishada Yoga, very quickly to set the stage, Arjuna's own condition is uh, starting with 28th verse. He says, uh, Drishtvedam Svajanam Krishna. I see my people, Ahamesha, Mamayete. I belong to them, they belong to me. And because of that one thought, it creates a ragadvesha in him, which creates the sadness, shokam in him, and then that causes the delusion, moha in him. And Arjuna's own diagnosis, finally, when we come to it, is dharma sammoda chetaha. I don't know what my dharma is, but I surrender to you. I am your shishya. So thankfully, he included the word shreyas, because if he doesn't ask, then Krishna cannot do. So... Krishna's diagnosis is saying, sorry, dude, you already know dharma. That's not your problem. You just don't know you. So let's come back to why Bhagavad Gita is a moksha sastram. It's because of this list of things. It's because we have the self-ignorance. We have the dvaita darshanam that there are many different things. And because of this, we have this sobana adhyasa. That means we have preferences, raga dvesha that causes it. And because of that, we do karma. And then the karma causes karma phalam, karma phalam causes deha abhimana, it could be body, mind, sense, organs, body, mind, intellect, which causes punarapi janaram, punarapi marnam, and we get so attached to it, infinitum. That's the problem. And hence, uh, Bhagavad Gita is a moksha sastram, and then there is a very big Veda Purva section, which is the full karma kanta. Veda Anta is the jnana kanta, and Bhagavad Gita is part of the prasthana trayam. So it is very clearly Vedanta. So now, uh, the singular message that Krishna starts, which we have again seen in chapter 2, Jnana Teva Kaivalyam, because avidya is the problem. If we don't diagnose the problem, then we end up taking all the medicines, and we are not supposed to. You take only the knowledge that removes your avidya, and that's the one and only way. And again, to set the stage, we already know Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. Karma Yoga it's like includes Upasana Yoga too, and uh, Swamiji's most famous uh, maxim, Karma Yoga is incomplete without Jnana Yoga and uh, Jnana Yoga is impossible without. So we have to go through this path, which brings to this particular talk. So the same question that uh, Arjuna has at the start of chapter 3. So now the sage is said, Krishna has given all the main Upadesham part is done, but he still like kind of has this doubt. Jayasi Chet Karmanaste Matha Buddha Janardana why are you making me do this really, really bad thing? You just told me everything is about jnana. And you are asking me to do karma. And that's like the biggest question. And we are in this too. Uh, so the problem here is, he wants to do jnana yoga. But in our life, how do we do it? We think, okay, we'll do karma yoga and we can wait a long time to get to jnana yoga. Or we think we are in Jnana Yoga because we are learning and discussing Bhagavad Gita and so on. But on a day-to-day -day basis, we are doing Karma Yoga. And how is this mixture possible? So there, uh, thanks to Acharya, Shankaracharya. Uh, so Swamiji very funnily says, if not for Shankaracharya, uh, Bhagavad Gita would be understandable only to two people, Krishna and Vyasa. 
So it's Adi Shankaracharya's uh, key that opens this lock that promise, provides this particular understanding to us. So there is a samuchya, there is a sambandha between karma and jnana, but it is not sama. It cannot be done equally. It can be done only serially. Krama samuchya is there, but not sama samuchya. And why is that? And this is like one of the first big teachings that we learned from the Gita Bhashyam that I have not seen discussed before in the earlier things. So this is called the Sapta Bhavana. And the first Bhavana is the Kartritru Bhavana. I am a Karta. Whenever we are doing Karma Yoga, we have to do a Sankalpa. And you have to say, I am a Yajamana and I am this Gotram and I am this. This is why I am doing Kamapata Samstudya Kshetvara, Shri Parameshwara Pritetam. Or we can also say, I want X, Y, Z and that's all fine. That's all very big list in Veda Purva. And we have this big notion that I am a Karta. The second thing is the kar karma sambandha. These karmas belong to me because I am doing it. Therefore, at least in the karma yoga way, we are saying, okay, I'm going to offer it all to Ishwara. So you kind of move from a karmi to a karma yogi, but still we are saying, I'm offering this to Bhagavan. And because of that, we expect a bhokta. I am going to get some results out of this. And this karma is going to produce a phalam and I have a karma pala sambandha too. The karma palam comes to me and whatever I get, I'm going to get it as a prasadam. And these are two very important steps we have seen how to practice karma yoga. This Ishwara prasada buddhi, whatever you get, think of it as a prasadam. Whatever you do, do it as an offering to Ishwara. But all this creates this six bhavanas leading to the most important seventh bhavana that is the dasa bhavana. Ishwara is my master. Ishura doles out karma palam and I accept it. So this is the sapta bhavanas that, uh, that are part of karma yoga. And this is what we call as a triangular format. Jiva, Jagat and Ishura. I am a poor miserable Jiva and I am victimized according to the circumstances to other people, to other objects, situations. And by the Jagat, that's the victimizer. And Jagat constitutes every single thing other than me, the Jiva. And Ishwara is my savior. I have to go. And that is the reason we do all the various Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga and everything. And we are in this triangular format. But then when we are learning the Jnana Yoga, we do the Mahavakya Vicharam. The Guru tells us Tattvamasi and it is up to us to claim Aham Brahmasmi. And we say we have understood this. So from the triangular format, we come to what is called a binary format. So you saw Brahma Satyam, Jagan Mitya, Jivo, Brahmaiva, Naparaha. So there were four quarters to it and we have collapsed two. So Jivatma and Paramatma are equal because of the Mahavakyam that the Guru taught us. And that is the Brahman. So now it just becomes Atma and Anatma. So now we have a binary format. There is only two. Brahma Satyam, Jagan Mitya. That's the only part that is left. But uh, when we do the Mahavakyam, now we have said that we are uh, Jivatma and Ishura, Paramatma are the same. But when we do the Karma Yoga and Upasana Yoga, we are still in the triangular format. So it is what is called Jnana Karma Upasana Samuchaya Kandanam. That is what the Acharyas teaches. You cannot do both. They are diagonally opposite. So this is like a very big uh, new shocking news that comes up because in Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga, we are all Karma Yoga, we are taught Ishwara Puna Buddhi and Ishwara Prasada Buddhi. In Upasana Yoga, we are taught Ekarupa Ishwara and Vishwarupa Ishwara. But all the time we are holding on to this Ishwara. And because we are doing all this karma man for something, we have this six bhavanas, which leading to the most important seventh bhavana that I am a Dasaha. We are in the Dasoham mode. But the Mahavakyam tells us Soham. It's only one. Oh, so sorry. I have to uh, let a couple of people. Hold on. So now this part um, is so far clear. So once again, uh, now Krishna has kind of cleared up very clearly. Hey, this is not possible together and hence um, somebody else talking
I think Spurti, your uh, mic is on, so maybe I'm hearing something from you. Okay, cool. Uh, um, so Bhagavan has said that, okay, this jnana karma samachaya is not possible. That's like the primary message we take away from there. But again, at the beginning of fifth chapter, Arjuna once again asked this question. Sanyasam karma nam krishna punar yogam samshashi. Please, like I'm still confused. But here, the earlier time, the question was about which path to take, karma yoga versus jnana yoga. But Krishna has clearly talked in 2, 3, and 4 about the jnana path. Now he wants to worry again karma versus, but this time he's asking about a particular type of sannyasa. This is again another new thing from the Gita Bhashyam. There are two types of sannyasa, vidvat sannyasa and vividisha sannyasa. So the vividisha sannyasa is the first one which we typically all know about. After Grihastha Ashrama, you do Vanaprastha and then you do Sanyasa where you take it up. Or there is another option from Brahmacharya. You directly decide, I want exclusive time to do uh, Sanyasa. I want to do Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasana. So that is the only path. And this is the path that Arjuna has in mind. So this is why he is very eager to go to that Sanyasa path. But all along Krishna has been talk about Jnani and how he can live and he has talked about all the good things about jnana as well as the jnani doing the karma and everything. So he gets a bit confused. And hence, uh, Krishna defines, no, 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 you are confusing about the other part. What I am recommending to you is not vividisha sannyasa. You cannot quit your karma and go away. You have to claim what is called vidvat sannyasa. That means you can be a grihastha. You don't have to take sannyasa, the ashrama. But what I told you so far about the Mahavakyam, it's a mental change. It's just a perspective change. It's a knowledge change. And that is all. And then after that, whatever you still do, internally you are a sannyasi, but externally let the world consider whatever ashrama you have to be in. And according to that, you still have your grihastha. So for us, it will apply that we'll do the panchamaha yajna and all the other things. And for Arjuna, he's a kshatriya, so he has to go still fight the war. And so Krishna very emphatically says, yes, you should take sannyasa. But the one that I told you is Vidvat Sanyasa. Not necessarily Vividesha to quit this and then go. It is for certain type of people who want to take that, but not everybody. So all of them are in sync. Krishna, Vyasa, Shankaracharya and Swamiji. The way you do it. So how do we do it? You claim it and then you live accordingly. And do we wait? So here are some of the interesting questions, right? Like, okay, how long am I going to be doing Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga and so on? So sometimes we tend to think, oh, I don't have Chitta Shuddhi. Or even before, I don't even have Sadhana Chattashtaya Sampatti. And we kind of expect it to kind of hit 100% before we can move on to the next stage. But at the same time, think of it as like as a school, right? Like we pass eighth grade, some subjects we might have gotten 45, but you are in the next grade. But you don't say, no, 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 I don't want to go to ninth grade. Let me hit 100. And then only then I'll go to my next grade. We don't say that. We know this is enough. This has gotten me to the next thing. I'll learn my more, finish high school, finish college, and so on. You can keep chugging along. And that is exactly what is prescribed here as well. You use karma yoga enough to get the sadhana, chadashtaya, sampatti to do the upasana yoga. You do enough of ekarupi, ishura to get your chitta shuddhi to go to shravanam. And in shravanam, the knowledge occurs. So this is the other interesting point here. So at what point do we claim that, okay, I've got my knowledge. I am ready for the next step. If you have Shraddha and Bhakti, the Bhagavan, the Bhagavan gives you the Guru. If you have Shraddha and Bhakti on the Guru, then you take the Guru's teaching to be very serious. And if you do that, you can claim it right then. The knowledge does not happen at some unique later point. It happens in Shravanam. When the Guru says Tattva Masi and you believe it and you can say, okay, yeah, that is true. I can see this, all this. We have done the Panchakosha Viveka, Ravasta Viveka, Sharira Treya Viveka, Drik Drishya Viveka. You use all these methods in these various Upanishads. You do all that and you can claim Aham Brahmasmi. So it is done. At that point, mentally, you just make a Sankalpa. Yes, now I can go to Vidvat Sanyasa. Only internally, I have to uh, renounce everything. Nothing external. And then the second thing is uh, when we say get moksha, claim moksha, go to Bhagavan, become Bhagavan, become one with Brahman and all those things. That word generally used is anubhava or gachati and so on. It's like all these words that kind of 
imply that something is going to happen somebody has to bless you some experience will come and then there is something will occur that will tell me that has been like a very big misunderstanding all that actually happens is only the knowledge that vritti that change in the mind that i am the atma and everything else is anatma once you come to that binary format that is it so the anubhava word because it's translated as experience it causes a lot of problem but if you think of it as a perspective it's a knowledge piece of knowledge it's an understanding then the confusion goes away so it's already done and even if you do not do it in shravanam no 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 i am still not ready i am still like i know i am in shravanam also but i am trying to do a little bit of my karma and upasana to clean up the sadhana chatushte sampatti or my chitta shuddhi and so on we saw due to the sapta bhavana doshas we cannot do that it cannot be possible you cannot do both of them at the same time you are in jnana yoga and in shravanam you have to claim even at shravanam if you do not claim at least in mananam you have your intellectual doubts then you read more and then you read more texts and you try to clear all this doubt how can this brahman really be me and you try to clear your doubts at that point and even if at that point it does not become clear by nididhyasanam time and when when do you when do you think you are ready for nididhyasanam nobody can actually tell you just like exactly like school if the teacher teaches calculus and says do you understand only you can answer whether you understood or not so bhagavan cannot certify you guru cannot certify you they can teach you they can say hey this is the teaching this is the truth and it is up to you to claim and then say okay i am in nididhyasanam and when you are in nididhyasanam that is when you are forced or you are expected to be in this binary format and the binary format tells you there is just atma and i am that nitya buddha shuddha mukta atma and moksha is not a goal moksha is my very swarupa so all along what i have been doing is that i have been a moksha i did not need anything in the first place but i have just been clearing the ignorance that i did not need it that is all has been happening all along you are whether you realize it or not you are already realized but the ignorance that i am not realized is all that we have been trying to clear up up until then so we are in nididhyasanam and we have cleared up the doubts and i am say okay i am ready to be in binary format but i am still living i am still having to do all these things so what are all generally the the issues that come up and this is called the pancha anatma so like five big things profession possessions family body and mind and as you can see it starts from the outermost like the farthest from us and keeps coming closer and closer and closer and these form the two sets ahamkara and mahamkara ahamesha mamayete from the uh, first chapter that the same problem that arjuna also faced the first three profession possession and family are mamakara these are all belonging to me and the ahamkara is the body and mind i am the body i am this mind this is me and we are holding on to this pancha anatma and as long as we hold we cannot be in true binary format only when you come away from all this five claim yourself as the atma then you can put everything else in the world and now you kind of put your body and mind also including it's very hard to say your family possessions and profession very easy generally people start from the other way right oh i'll just first quit my job i'll retire and then i'll give away all my possessions and this is kind of close to vanaprastha or retired life and then slowly i will try to go away from there uh, but it becomes difficult and difficult and difficult and the body and mind are the most difficult to uh, give away so um, and so one of the steps that swami ji recommends is what is called port reduction so we already know how in karma yoga like a very big metric that we can use is fir reduction and ccc increase frequency intensity recovery from any anxiety or depression or sadness or anger anything negative comes reduce the frequency we reduce the intensity of it and reduce the recovery time away from it and calmness cheerfulness and confidence we increase all the three and that's the benefit of karma yoga and upasana yoga but now we are in nididhyasana mode jnana yoga nididhyasana mode and how do we uh, be in binary format as we saw the pancha anatma is going to be like a big obstacle for most of the part so you do what's called a port reduction possessions obligations responsibility and transactions you try to reduce them as much as possible because 
in vividisha sanyasa that is why it was recommended because they said hey you don't have to do all these duties that like the normal grihastha and other people have to do you go exclusively just go to your guru ashrama just study and then go to the forest contemplate on it and you have all the time to do but we are grihastha we are part of the society we have to do our duties and obligations so we kind of build up a lot on that and this kind of takes it in this very uh, self fulfilling prophecy of accumulating more things and we kind of get pulled in by let me achieve more let me get more let me do this or this will do this to me and so on and we build all this and then the first way is this fourth reduction but even these four kind of mostly take care of the mamakara part and that is when we kind of come a little bit deeper level what is called a class reduction this they like get another trick and here we kind of come very close to the mind so we still have the controllership and then there is this anxiety for a certain small set of people i am really worried about this or i end up throwing in a special prayer oh yeah yeah by the way i want this admission i want x i want y or i want this money problem to be solved i want to crack this uh, particular problem and so on so as long as we have these three things we still know we are deviating away from the binary format and the port reduction and class prediction are the recommendations but they also kind of become us become like as a metric gauge as a meter for us to say hey am i accumulating more of the port am i having this controllership if only these people or these things these situations go according to my plan things would be better or are you anxious about the situation or throwing in a special prayer wishing for the universe to bend according to your wishes then we are deviating again from the uh, binary format back to a triangular format and so here is another very interesting twist so we can also apply now fir to this too but in a positive way like okay you want to reduce the frequency of the time that you are not in binary format similarly the intensity and regularity it is only very natural for us as we are cleaning up our acts and we are doing all these things but we are in nididhyasana you have claimed the moksha but it is okay to fall every now and then but then you still reduce all those things and you try to be in binary format as much as possible so is fir reduction to zero possible so that's the other thing right like we kind of think oh i'll get rid of all these things and then when i have no anger no sadness at all then i am ready for my next step or when i have complete chitta shuddhi and i can be in samadhi all the time then i am ready no it can never be zero it's just asymptotic you can keep on doing it but you will never go to zero there will always be something that will come up there will be a raga dvesha that will hit at the first point but how you react to it that is the the main key point at that point if you can claim yeah yeah that comes up but i am the atma nitya mukta is my swarupa i don't have to react to this i don't have to engage with this and if you can do that more and more and more then you are still in the binary format and that is what is recommended and why do all those comes just like we have the sadhana chatushtayam we have a dushta chatushtayam the bad four the ahamkara mamakara and raga dvesha is always going to come up and our aim is to kind of reduce that as much as possible so we know nirvana shatakam the group knows like advanced students forwards and backwards but there is like lot of things that says it's i am not the uh, quick second i have to admit one more person yeah but um so we say i am not the body in this i am saying oh this is like i don't have any relation i don't have dharma artha kama or even moksha i don't have a guru shishya pita mata and all those things but sometimes it becomes very uh, superficial for us to chant this but not be able to claim and there is like very one interesting thing if we connect back so the the most closest thing the body and the mind and even closer than the body is the mind the ahamkara so that is why the first line when shankaracharya says says mano buddhi ahamkara chittani naham and if you put a tasmat only when you can do the first line fully completely i am not a mind then all the other things make much more easy sense 
that you can drop everything else and you can truly claim Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. So, okay, but you are in Nididhyasana mode. We are in Nididhyasana mode. And we want to still claim, we want to still be doing because Krishna clearly says you are doing what is called Vidvat Sanyasa. You are in the society. You do your Grihasthashrama duties and everything. So how do we do? From the Gita itself, actually in 3, 4, 5, what we think of as the Karma Yoga Kanda, like section, generally people segregate as the three sets of six. It's Karma Yoga, Upasana Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. And uh, Shankaracharya or Krishna do not do that. Uh, but the Tattvamasi is also there. There's a Tvam Padartam and then there's a Tat Padartam and the Asi Padartam. That also actually Krishna or Shankaracharya do not do it. But later commentators at least do that part. But we kind of understand the first six to be strictly Karma Yoga and that kind of could have caused some misconception. But it is again full and full and full of Jnana Yoga. Again like the Tatparyam of Gita is some Moksha Shastram and it's going to do Jnana Yoga. Everything else that's been said is only incidentally said to get you into the Jnana Yoga mode as quick as possible into Shavana Manana and Nididhyasana and as quickly as possible into the Nididhyasana. So what do we, how do we do this karma? Guna Guneshu Vartante. So matter will deal with matter. It does not matter, as Swamiji says. So that is the only way to look at it. I am the Atma. So Anatma will interact with Anatma. There is absolutely no two ways about it. It will happen. Indriyani Indri Arteshu Vartante, Guna Guneshu Vartante. That will happen. And then how do you do your actions? 418 turns out it's like one of the most important shlokas. It's the Sutra Shloka. That even Krishna thought, okay, this might not be clear enough. Let me do six more shlokas, 419 to 424, explaining what this thing means. Karmanya karmaya pashet akarmanicha karmaya. So it's not action in inaction. The better way to look at it would be karm action in place of inaction. Inaction in place of action. So wherever something is happening, it is still the Brahman. The Brahman, Brahman is actionlessness, but the action is happening because of the Anatma and the Anatma will do action that we cannot stop. And then when we do our normal day-to-day -day stuff, we have like the famous 5, 8 and 5, 9. Naiva kinchit karomiti. So the tattva with those who know will say, I am not doing this, but Pashi and Shrinvan, Sprashan, Jigran, all these things, I will be doing all those actions. But Indriyani, Indri, Irteshavartati. That's the thing that's doing. But I am not doing it. So as long as we maintain these three attitudes, you are still doing your karma yoga, which also includes upasana yoga and every single thing. And you can still be in the binary format in Nididhyasana. Why to do this karma? And this is like one genuine interesting question. And that's like why some people just drop everything and say, okay, I don't see the point in it and it could go. But we are grihastashramis and we have to do three reasons. Again, two reasons and that... Um, Bhagavan himself has given. So one is Loka Sangraham. And uh, King Janaka is like the most famous example. Krishna quotes him and says, you do this for Loka Sangraham. And then the second thing is, we are all leaders in various different capacities, either at the uh, big citizenship level or at the company level or at our family level, most definitely at our family level. Only what you do, others will try to emulate. And then the Acharati word, uh, Shankaracharya and Swamiji beautifully expands on it. There are three types of Acharati, Vichara, Achara and Prachara. The self-inquiry, live the life and you teach. And the most important of this is to actually live the life. That's why Gandhi also said, my life is my message. And the more you can set yourself as an example, that's what others would tend to emulate. So the binary format, if you note in Vishnu Sahasranamam, Bhagavan himself will say towards the end, Yomam Nama Sahasrena Stotu Michati Pandava. A lot of people would like to chant all my thousand names, but Soham Ekena Shlokena. You tell only one shlokam, that is enough. But tell it with a Bhavana, Soham. I am that. So when you are reading Vishwam, Vishnu, Vashatkaraha, you should mentally be reading it as I am Vishwam, I am Vishwaha, I am Vashatkara, Aham, Aham, Aham. You have to replace with that. 
and that is like another one of those very nice acid tests that we can do ourselves it's like whenever we read this and do the prayer how much can we have that soham bhavana if we kind of say oh bhagwan thank you so much please forgive me mistakes i want this x y we are kind of falling back to the triangular format that's like a very nice place to catch ourselves and this is also another very nice place to do nididhyasanam when we think probably shravanam is happening somebody is saying for example what i am saying might be already uh, knowledge to a lot of you you might know it but whenever i am saying the word brahman if you can say oh that's aham and if you can claim that that becomes nididhyasanam so it does not become repetition at all it just becomes reinforcement so we just went through eight chapter so i just thought i would reconcile a little bit from that uh and it's like another important point like the whole mahavakyam and this nididhyasanam is saying jeevan mukti and videha mukti are all non relevant because i am a mukta to begin with whether i know it or not that is my natural condition so this is all like kind of given to the beginner students karma yoga upasana yoga or all like the uh, the advertising it's a marketing material dharma artha kama all the three purusharthas are also marketing material to get you to the moksha but then you think oh, i have to get this moksha and i am a mumukshu and so on but when you come to jnana yoga you realize no that's been your very nature you just thought you needed moksha you don't need but you need to promise all this to kind of get to this part so we can roughly think of the each chapter then as the karma yoga kind of will go to the krishna gati and then upasana yoga will go to shukla gati and then the jnana yoga folks will get moksha but moksha again claim moksha it's like i don't need moksha is the real moksha and then swami ji finally says <laughs> those who practice vishada yoga or no yoga at all you get atogati <laughs> nobody knows where you go but then there is still ragadvesha a little bit happening because fir never goes to zero at all right so how do you deal with it and that is why we have the uh, vishwarupa darshana if you are in karma yoga mode saying oh i am not ready for this heavy stuff i am in karma yoga mode then it tries to get you as quickly as possible to vishwarupa because once you see everything as god then you will not have ragadvesha how can you hate god but if you are in jnana yoga then you are in atma anatma format then you just say this is a mithya anatma this does not worth the worry at all or worth a thought about this at all so that's why we have the ekarupa ishwara to vishwarupa ishwara to arupa ishwara so the ekarupa ishwara is to devata is like the easiest form for us to visualize from there we develop this vishwarupa and then from there we have to go to the nirguna arupa ishwara uh, very nice way of uh, assimilating this for me was uh, ekarupa ishwara you worship vishwarupa ishwara you meditate because how can you worship if you are offering flower that's also ishwara if you are saying uh, oh i'm going to do this puja any material that you use is also vishwarupa ishwara so you only meditate and then arupa nirguna ishwara you just understand you claim it there is nothing more to do and it's like one very nice thing i learned about uh, uh, what sanyasis do actually they do this this is like one of the uh, sort of karma if you will like a puja that they are supposed to do this meditation nididhyasana maybe is the right word they do a uh, couple of times a day is they say oh i am going to pray to god and then they say okay i am going asanam samarpayami patram samarpayami pushpam samarpayami argyam samarpayami you kind of offer one one thing but then you say i'm giving you asanam but everything is brahman how can i do so i remove it and negate it i am going to give you water but no no that is also brahman so i kind of remove it and you keep negating one by one by one so shodasha upachara becomes the shodasha abachara and that is what the sanyasi is it's like a very nice way of meditating once you make everything as brahman then how can you so that's why you can only meditate on that fact and then when you do the nirguna arupa ishwara you can only uh, claim it so why do we still pray to god initial stages we pray to god the only purpose is to get a guru then the guru gives you the shastram and the upadesham the mahavakya vicharam that happens and then the shastram tells no you do not need all this in the first place to begin with so we go from the world dependence to god dependence 
to guru shastram dependence to finally self dependence and that's why they say you need the guru uh, bhagavat kripa but then you need the guru kripa shastra kripa and then finally you need the atma kripa and that's the sixth chapter's word uddaret atmana atmanam you need that self confidence because if you have everything else but you do not have the confidence to claim that aham brahmasmi then nothing else can help and we have to be sadly in the cycle of going and working for something trying something more so swami ji gives very roughly this split 33% don't believe at all nastika so yeah we cannot even talk to them about anything and there is a very good chunk one third who believe vedanta but it's all theory it looks not practical at all it's not doable how can this really work and then there are people who believe the theory and know it will work just not for me i have like some things to take care of and then if they do that uh, yeah sadly it won't work whatever you think that's what will happen but then there is this small percentage uh, this is why like krishna also uses the word sahas ratio right like out of thousands and thousands of people only a few believe and out of the few only will know this thing and that's like the same thing finally we come to this small part who will say i am going to be in nididhyasana i am in nididhyasana or i am beyond all that i don't even have to claim that thing anymore binary format is my natural state and i am there uh before we come to this i want to say one more thing so i started with the brahma satyam jagan mitya jeevo brahmaiva naparah and we said jeevatma paramatma are same you kind of equated it but you are still left with atma and atma that is still dvaitam there are two things uh so that is where the jagat mitya part comes up it is all a mitya it's only a projection it is only something that is superimposed on the uh, brahman brahma satyam jagan mitya are two sides of the same coin we don't see that easily brahma satyam we can very easily understand because of course jeevatma paramatma veda and all those things uh we we take it for granted oh this is the scriptures the guru saying it and everything the jagat mitya we also kind of sometimes take it yeah, yeah yeah this is all illusion when it's very convenient for us but the pancha anatma gets in the way jagat this mitya but my family let them just stand behind me and that is because of your ahamkara my body my mind my family so we just remove a few things from that mitya part and we hold on to that and that is the part that we learnt about the port reduction and the class reduction as a way to be more in the binary format and once you are in the binary format then you have only atma and anatma and again that's like one of the things that's initially uh, said more for a beginner student that hey look at it like this way or oh, you should develop viveka i mean the sadhana chatushtaya sampati itself vivekam and vairagyam and mumukshutvam but as you can see every one of them keeps getting negated vivekam from what everything is anatma in the beginning you are atma and there is nothing to look for or get or anything you just have to claim it yourself subject everything that's an object is an anatma so and it's all superimposed on you as a mithya world it's just a projection so what are you having the vivekam from so and then the vairagyam from and then mumukshutvam of course you already claim you are a nitya mukta so why do you even claim that that's why the jeevan mukti when the jnani attains realization or what happens afterward the videha mukti or all terms only that's being said from the world's perspective from outsider's perspective the jnani has already disclaimed of all these things so there is no separate jeevan mukti videha mukti and all those things and of course if you even negate all that at that part what of even to think about um, think about punarapi jananam or what happens in my next birth or uh, some of people like even the body and mind people can negate but we tend to think about the sukshma shariram so what happens in my next birth can i go to swarga can i go to heaven can i do this and so on no i mean you have kind of negated all those things uh, so all those is like only how people talk about for us to be in nididhyasinam we have to understand brahma satyam jagan mitya let's take this one very nice example um, the the water wave ocean example so when 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 it's like this uh liquid uh if this water considers 
uh, I am this tiny amount of liquid. I am stuck in this room in some geographic location in Earth. I'm going to have to go through the digestive tract of some person, and I'm going to end up in uh, God knows where, and I'm eventually going to go merge with the river. Oh, Bhagavan, please save me. Please let me evaporate as soon as possible, come back to the river. It could be either I go back to Ganga or I go back to Pacific Ocean and let me merge. That is one way of uh, thinking about. I am helpless. Who wants to do anything with this? Uh, my situation can do anything. I am. I live according to the whims and fancies of everything around me. But if the water can claim, instead of me being a small liquid in this container, in this place and time, instead, if this can say, I am the water, then the water can very boldly say, hey, all the liquids in the world are me. All the rivers are me. I give rise to Ganga. I give rise to Pacific Ocean. I give rise to all the living beings. And it can very truly uh, claim that. And what does it have to do? It just needs to know to claim as I am water and not identify myself as a small liquid. I am contaminated. I am in this small container and I am in this particular place and I am in this particular time. If you can get rid of that space, time, energy, matter concept, and it can claim myself as the water tatvam then it can truly say, I give rise to everything else. I give rise to the whole oceans where all the living things depend on me, uh, which is the most majestic uh, line from Kaivalya Upanishad. Mai eva sakalam jatam, mai sarvam pratishtitam, mai sarvam layam yati tat brahmat vayam asmi ham. So it says, everything rises in me, everything rests in me, everything resolves in me. And I am that Brahman that give support to all these things. When the wave says, I'm a wave, it depends upon the ocean for security. But if the wave can say, I am the water, then the ocean now depends on the water for security. That's like the exact same uh, concept with the Aham Brahmasmi Mahavakyam's power uh, that we have to wield as well, understand as well, uh, when we are in the uh, binary format. So on that note, um, so okay, so how do how do uh, how does this journey to uh, Gita Bashyam happen? Uh, so first, yeah, of course, Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. And uh, Shankaracharya sang in Bhajagovindam, Guru Charanam Bhuja Nirbara Bhaktaha, Samsarat Achirat Bhava Muktaha. One who very sincerely and dedicatedly hold on to the lotus feet of the Guru, they will very soon, Achirat, very soon, they can cross Samsara and retain Mukta, and again cross technically claim. You just remove the ignorance that you had to cross in the first place. Uh, so Swamiji, uh, again, like for me, new in the lectures, this Gita has to be read a couple of times. So one, first, even though it's part of the Prasthanatrayam, it kind of feels so approachable because it's like part of a story and we kind of think, ah, this is very easy. It's just like a dialogue. I'll learn this. And that is like one way. Uh, and but it is, it's not possible to fully get all the import of the, the Bhagavad Gita messages unless it's viewed through the Upanishad lens. And so what Swamiji prescribes, uh, so in the Sastra, the Sastra Prakashika app as well as the uh, website, and I can post that uh, PDF later to our group. There's a prescribed order of study that Swamiji recommends. So he says, okay, there is like a couple of Prakarana Granthams, Tattva Bodha being the most uh, important and first one. And then a few ones, there is Bhagavad Gita. Then after that, you go through a list of Upanishads. So there is this list of principal Upanishads, 10, 12, 13, some list. But Swamiji says, go at least like eight or some of them, five or eight of them. So you kind of get this message. And all the Upanishads are talking the exact same thing. And then once you finish those Upanishads, now do Gita Bhashim. And then the Gita Bhashyam, uh, Swamiji takes Shankara Bhashyam, of course. And now with this Upanishad lens, that Shankaracharya. Uh, so th that is a difference too. Um, a lot of the times when people interpret Gita, either they give their own interpretation or they use the Agama Shastras to give the interpretation. And that is going to cause many confusion because they are all coming later. The only thing the Smriti can depend on is Shruti. So only you have to go one step higher, and that's the Upanishads. 
and that is what shankaracharya does he says i am also going to have to write a bhashyam now because there is so much confusion even in his time he says that word there is so much confusion there is so many bhashyams but i am going to have to write one because i have to use the shruti and make all the derivations only based on this and so uh, we too in our journey we do the gita study and then we do upanishads uh five to ten of them and then we do this gita bhashyam uh we get lot more perspectives we get like what shankaracharya intended and this is actually uh, many of the messages that swami ji himself uh, or or any guru in the uh, shankaracharya shishya parampara swami c swami d uh, all of them take this messages and give it to us but they give it to us at like different levels based on the amount of time they have the audience and so on and then like the right way to or or i think the right way or serious way to go about it is to do the full thing so the gita moolam lectures of swami ji itself is about 250 lectures and then there is like lot of upanishad based on the upanishad size it goes anywhere from 10 20 lectures all the way to 100 to 200 lectures and in the case of chandogya upanishad and brihadaranya upanishad it's very big massive and then it gets to gita bhashyam which is about i believe 650 to 700 lectures uh so that goes like in detail in like lot of these concepts and because now there is the gita moolam you know where everything is you know the upanishad where the mahavakyam and everything has been discussed the gita bhashyam now swami ji teaches more detail about like what shankar bhashyam says and some of these messages uh that i thought uh, i would share like i am right now at uh, i just finished about the 13th chapter it's so about like 430 or so lectures on my journey in in the gita bhashyam uh so which is pro- which is what prompted me like i mean we have like all these questions where am i what am i doing which stage should i be and am i regressing am i going back and forth between different yogas and so on and all this that i learned from the gita bhashyam lectures uh gave me a much much better idea how to think about uh, all these things so thank you om tat sat awesome krishna terrific man this is like do good good knowledge thank you so much fantastic great yeah, summary brilliant uh, what you been learning thank you krishna thank you krishna. thank you thank you so much so yeah thank Asana, you krishna think... very nice oh thank you thank you so much um so yeah i think the the message is uh, chug along we are on the right path but there is like lots and lots and lots of lectures sometimes i joke about uh, my thing to uh, so japanese have a word called sundoku sundoku means it's the list of books that you have bought but you have not yet read so i just call it the sundoku shelf so it's like this big list like i have a vasana my anatma i shouldn't talk that way i'll just say i uh, i have a vasana for books so i i just end up accumulating more books and then one day uh, i put my mathematician mind and my book vasana mind together and calculated that i already have enough books that i'll not be able to read in this janma uh, so so but but we still get like new books or something and so on uh, so yeah i mean we we can easily do the math like uh, the once i put the catalog we can see okay uh, here is the gita bhashyam uh, there's a oh no gita lectures the moolam lectures it's swami ji's bhashyam and then there is the shankara bhashyam there's all this upanishad and some prakarna grantha and some Uh, deviations and other things that we end up taking uh, so here are all these lectures and and you pick your guru and you pick your system uh, a number of lectures number of books number of pages and you can do a very quick math and then see okay if i am covering this range where do i go and i hope like one of the uh, one of the motivations or inspirations you might take uh, from this picture i would be very humbled if that's uh, the result of this is that uh, you know ma karma pala hetur guru mate sangot sagarmani i'm not attached to this but that's my uh, genuine sattvic desire if you will is is to chug along in this path more seriously uh, is to is to kind like it takes a lot of time to go through this lectures and takes multiple times to go over this as well that's like one of the things that i thought is like this is not the book that i remember reading and i've read like a few different versions of gita and even swami ji's moolam lectures of 250 Oh, and i am reading this uh, bashyam it's like a completely different book even yeah. something as uh, the the shloka that we all claim we know karmanyeva adhikaraste 247 there is a different interpretation interpretation for it there the adhikarha is not 
the right to your duty, but Adhikara is you are the Adhikari. You can only do karma. Krishna is saying only you can do this. You cannot go to Jnana right now because you have to develop and all these things. So it's like something as simple as a shloka that I thought I knew forwards and backwards. <laughs> I have stumbled along. And what else to talk of something like Nasato Vidyate Bhava or Karmanya Karmaya of Pashyat. Nasato Vidyate Bhava is like 10 lectures. Karmani, that is 10 lectures. Like Kshetrakyam Chapi Maam Vidhi, 13 chapter, that's like 22 lectures. Like Hello. goes in so deep that you kind Hello. of get this I mean, I mean, I mean, new view. So, Krishna, Krishna, as a host, yes. can you please mute everybody who is uh, not speaking? Oh, uh, yes. And, um, and, and uh, second thing is, uh, you know, would you mind just turning off the screen share so we can see everybody oh, yes, on the screen? Yes, yes, yes. And then we can uh, get into Q&A if there is uh, anything else that... Uh, there's so the screen else share should be done, and I've yeah, added. Yeah, screen share is done. So okay. please mute everybody because I I can hear some uh, you know disturbances. Huh? So uh, okay, uh, uh, any more slides, Krishna? Any presentation? Uh, are, are we done? Okay, yes. awesome, fantastic. And we already have the first hand go with the A Ajay. Over to you. Sorry, I thought you had a question first, Rajesh. No, no, my I interrupted Krishna only to uh, pause everybody's okay. uh, chatter. Okay. Yeah. So this is fantastic. I mean, I know you've kind of done a lot of reading to kind of arrive at the summary. And I like the way you kind of transition from four to three to binary to eventually uh, singularity. Uh, so that was really nice. But one of the things that sort of really caught my attention was you talked about the three uh, steps, if you will, which is vichara, achara, and what's the third Achara. one? Prachara. Prachara. That's the teaching part, right? But I'm just focused on the first two, which is Vichara and Achara. I think the, a lot of the stuff that we are, I mean, Gita in itself is a nice summary of the whole Vedas and everything else. It's the kind of the nectar, if you will. And of course, like you said, you know, there are different Upanishads and the Pashyams and all of them that have their own interpretations and and they all, I think, provide a perspective. And that kind of goes some ways in terms of the whole Vichara piece, right? Uh, but where the rubber hits the road is the is what do you do in your day-to-day -day life, the achar, right? And, you know, again, just, just candid, and, you know, you go through various um, stages in your, you know, journey as, as, a, as we do with this uh, satsang where we're doing a lot of vichara, right? And there are stages that I kind of go through where I'm like, I've done enough of this. What am I going to change my my life, right? And I know this chapter 13, which talks about things that you should do to uh, cleanse the mirror, if you will, right? Uh, but is, I mean, I don't know whether it resonates with other people in the group, but Sort of sometimes I, I get a feeling that there's a bit of an overdose of vichara which is going on. There's not enough vachara. <laughs> that, that, so, uh, so I think uh, the, the main thing is, so that is, uh, that's a sattvic vasana we all have. And sastra vasana is like one of the most important things that's very hard to get rid of. And one of these techniques, the claim it and then become it, or like fake it till you make it. Believe it, become it. I think you should add those things to not just fake it till you make it. But yeah. uh, that part is very important. So we kind of know that that uh, that's the the state to claim. Sometimes you you use these techniques like port reduction, class production, and so on to put it into practice to make it more conducive. But all that you are still doing only to like if you really look at it. You are doing it only for the Anatma's sake, right? The Anatma body should be doing something. The Anatma mind should be happy. Everything becomes a hobby at that point. It's like a play and you have to play the role. The body is doing something. Let it all happen. But I am not dependent on anything. I think the more that we could claim that I am not dependent on... Actually, uh, Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampati itself could become an obstacle. So Swamiji gives this two uh, examples, right? Like oh, the, the, the best example is the pole vault. So you need the pole to kind of go up to a certain stage, but you have to drop the pole to finally go up. So if we kind of keep on working on the sadhana chashti and the other things or the pole reduction and class production to kind of go completely to zero, we already know that's not going to happen. 
and the port is to clean but then there could be the question then why all this why is there like this so many other things that are being fed to us that's the uh, they, they call the thing as the adhya ropa and apavada so they first give something and then they take it away and negate thing somebody says i want coffee uh, you cannot just give them coffee directly you have to give it to them only in a cup so you use the cup you drink the coffee and then you throw away the container the coffee's job is done so like two groups of people one will say oh if i'm going to throw away the cup anyway why do i need the cup to begin with then they cannot drink the coffee in the first place or the other thing somebody would get too much attached to this oh this cup is the one that really helped me get this coffee so i'm going to hold on to it and keep it then you are holding on to still the the trash pot so i think the big big thing for me from this part is it's okay i mean guna ganesha vartante indriyani indriyartesh vartante it's going to happen but the more we kind of dissociate from the worry that i am not doing this sadhana chatushte sampatti or my chitta shuddhi is not clean that itself becomes the obstacle so actually dropping the worry it should be an evolution not a revolution like one day it's done and i'm finished but more like i need not worry about this it will take care of its own thing more that binary format thought comes up the other actually automatically then ends up taking care of itself it becomes better that's uh, swami ji's message yeah no that's a that's a good way to put it i mean i mean i i look at a lot of the lectures that i listen to from time to time all assorted not as structured as you do as more of reminder and reinforcement that look you know the, the the ultimate truth is what it is and at some level it also kind of gives you some amount of uh, you know it, it helps you sort of become less materialistic right yeah. and and so there is it, it is kind of it it feeds off each other at a certain level you right yep, yep but uh, but then you know again i also kind of come back to this point where you know we i think consciously need to think about our our vyavahar right uh as much as we think about sort of who am i because yep i think both of them need to move in parallel so that's the limited point i wanted yes. to make but yes. thank you for the thank you for the lecture that was really nice so that's the thing so the karma everything completely continues no change at all and you try to do it to the best of the ability the only flip in the mindset is you don't do it for moksha anymore or you don't do it for chitta shuddhi or sadhana you you have claimed it already everything happens is a uh, play it has to happen because it has to happen that's the way the world will work awesome so krishna amazing uh-huh. presentation thank you you know i had yes. one uh, uh, one question and uh, uh, just just to just to ask you this right so before one does any vichara there is a particular achara what one is following okay that's that's like whatever path one was following without really understanding what has been happening now um, after certain amount of vichara maybe not necessarily the going through the method- methodical way in some sense that like what you have gone through people have studied something they picked up here and there and they oh some insights have come to them and uh, maybe that's not getting reflected in the achar okay there's a dissonance between what the person is thinking is right but what the person is not practicing as right okay how does one get over the dissonance um so try my best so two 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 points so one this is going to become bit repetitive but again whatever dissonance is happening or the stage that we think we should be is not happening is all still happening only in the anatma world anatma body anatma mind that thing so you are not doing anything to get the moksha you claim the moksha and then whatever happens let it happen let it score 80 60 fail mark whatever let it all happen in it so that's like one way to look at it leave it along as it is but then the the bhagavad gita also gives uh, many of the other recommendations but because we are still dealing with the world on a day to day basis we know the teachings and it's like even more now um, imperative for us because we know there is this right path there is this recommendation how do we do and i think i uh, completely agree both with like ajay's and yours point to how do we do and that's where the the three main teachings uh, come up from one from chapter 2 that's the sthita pragnya lakshana then there is uh, from chapter 12 that's a para bhaktaha then chapter 14 there is a gunatitaha and then there is also of course uh, how does a brahmanishta jnani live 
there are some sections in chapter 4 and chapter 5 as well and then there is of course swami d's uh, famous book value of values uh, the 20 values uh, from chapter 13 so these are all listed and these are all the guidelines for us to kind of aspire to so there is the uh, so we kind of think oh, i am claiming all this but i feel like a fake yani <laughs> which is which is which is the way i think oh, i am like swami ji said claim okay i am also claiming it but then i still have like all this uh, things the the recommendation is we we work for it when it automatically spontaneously helplessly happens that is the sthita pragnya yani but at the same time paramacharya also says uh, that it's not something that we idolize and idealize and put it away and say it's for somebody else or only when i am at a certain level i'll be able to do all those things it's for us to aspire all the time to be able to consciously deliberately practice it and then when we are in that nididhyasanam even that uh, so some are already in the state all the time helplessly they are in the state and we know the famous examples of ramakrishna paramahamsa or bhagavan ramana maharshi and so on and then uh, the serious seekers mumukshus or who has become the jeevan muktas or nitya muktas who claim this and then try to become consciously put the effort into the nididhyasanam to say i am in this but whatever happens let it happen that will still go on so that's the uh, the vichara and achara part and um, how 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 to how to reconcile reconcile the differences of an expected uh, place to be and where where we are again coming back to one the truth is it doesn't really matter like if you have got this shravanam part and realized it then it doesn't matter but for the mind and body it still needs to happen so that can happen parallelly in the in the separate uh, plane so it's it's like you are in the higher order of reality whatever is in the mithya reality so that's how it can coexist together so there is the karma karma improvement meditation all those things can happen but it is all happening in in a lower order of reality without affecting the higher order of reality that's why the water and the the mirage water and the desert sand can still coexist together because they are different orders of reality got it thank you krishna appreciate that that's a good good just to good way of looking at it yeah, just to add to what uh, krishna is saying and you know uh, what ajay's question was right in terms of how do i <clears throat> make this you know practical right uh in some way i think the answer is um, you know um this tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mamanusmara yuchha right so i was also reading this chatushloki bhagavatam which is basically the essence of bhagavatam in just four shlokas which lord narayana gives to brahma ji and in the third shloka he mentions he says all that you need to do and all that you need to know is to say rooted in the self know that i am everywhere in the first stanza he actually says i was in the past i was in the present and i am in the future there is only i okay but then when you ask this question hey you know if you are everything then why is it that i am not seeing you and for that he says the answer in the second verse he says it is actually the yoga maya which is actually having the two properties of avarna and vikshepa avarna is basically uh, you know uh, not uh, being able to see what is the real thing and vikshepa is something projecting which is something which is unreal okay so the world is jagat mithya is the projection that we are talking about vikshepa and avarna is the consciousness which is hidden from us mm-hmm. aham brahmasmi and it is tantamount to saying something like in a dark room there are objects but you don't see it because there is no light right so this is and the third thing he says hey you put me in a trap you know your yoga maya is actually telling me that what is real is hidden and what is unreal is projected so how do i come out of this i will never be able to come out of this then he says the same thing that you know let this be the parameda paramena samadhina that is let this be the ultimate goal and what is the ultimate goal the ultimate goal is to stay rooted in the self so for a jnani he will say he stay let's stay rooted in the self and for a bhakta he will say constant remembrance of the lord okay so it is like standing in the ghat of you know haridwar and holding on to something in the in the bank and swimming in the water and taking a bath in the water that way you don't get swayed away by the tides of samsara but if you were to leave your hand away you will get swept away but what is that anchor that anchor is tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mamunuswara yudhyacha which is basically 
every time all the time think of me that is all you need to know nothing else and he concludes saying that if you have this knowledge nothing else you need to know so i just thought i will just share that but i think that is a practical way of living this uh, life you know i think uh, just wanted to share that part thank you yeah. absolutely krishna I, think, sorry. krishna I think what you did was very beautiful uh much more analytical than i've ever myself imagined uh, but also, I would say where you started and where you ended with Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasana. And I'd also say that when you find your guru, uh, this is where bhakti and jnana merge. Because if we take our guru for what he says, that I am always with you, I am you, this is where they merge and taking it to heart and living it as best you can every day, there's no resistance to what's true, not really the resistance is imagined illusion is imagined uh, uh, being at the feet of the guru and seeing every moment as best you understand the guru that uh brahmasmi uh atma is brahman brahman is atma uh I, I think that again everything else falls away because you're we only naturally return home and again, as you said, we've never really left it. And the guru is that bridge. Beautifully said, beautifully said, yeah. And actually, uh, in chapter 12, uh, Krishna himself considers everything as bhakti yoga. And there is a uh, very nice, a uh, lot of Swamiji talks, like this one hour talks in various occasions, Guru Purnima, or for uh, other occasions, he gives this talk. And, and he gives this talk about, can I be spiritual without being religious? Because a lot of people want to take the secular message and not to do this. And he says the other way is possible. You can be religious, but not spiritual, but not this. Because you kind of start off with the Ishara Prasada Buddhi and Arpana Buddhi. And you have to believe in the Ishara's teaching that the Shruti was created. And this is the only Pramanam by which I can learn this. And if you do not know, you cannot even go to the, the next step. But the Karma Yoga and the Upasana Yoga and Jnana Yoga are all forms of just different steps in the ladder of Bhakti Yoga. The highest form of bhakti is realizing that the God that I am praying and I are, are the same. So that is why Bhagavan says, Sa me priyaha, when they say the equivalence that can happen only when, when there is this uh, self equal to God, Jivatma equal to Paramatma equation. Like the Brihadaranya Upanishad has this Atmanastu Kaamaya Sarvam Priyo Bhavati. Everything becomes dear only because the love for the self is the most. And the, the love of the self and love of the God can be absolutely the most only when they are equal. And the, the God equals self. And that's like the absolute truest uh, bhakti yoga, the highest level that uh, we aspire to. Beautifully said, yeah. And then I want to add one more thing to what Subhu said, Mom Anusmara. And then uh, the two words that like really resonated uh, in also Ananya Chinte and Toma. Uh, yeah, so not it's not Anya Chintya. Don't think of other Ananya without interruption. Think and then it's not Smara. It's Anusmara. So without any interruption, constantly be grounded in this Nididhyasanam thought. Chapter five and chapter six are both Nididhyasanam. Even chapter six is called Dhyana Yoga, but it is the uh, Nididhyasanam. So chapter five is the Brahma Abhyasa Nididhyasanam. When something spontaneously happens. That's why Naiva Kinchit Karomiti, the jnani is able to claim, even if I am doing Pashyan Shrinvan, Pashyan Jigran, all those things. But in chapter six, there is like some method given because we have to consciously practice that Nididhyasnam. Again, going back to the, the highest level of bhakti, highest form of jnanam, the Nididhyasnam, if you have to do Atma Samstam Manakritva Na Kinchidapi Chintayet, if you have to do that, so yeah, we, without thinking about anything else, to be grounded in that. Binary format, as Swamiji says. I, I found that framework actually uh, very, very helpful. Because without that, like Shavana Maran and Nididhyasana is like all these various terms and where we are. But Swamiji putting it in like in the format of triangular format to binary format, stay there as much as possible, Atma and Atma. And then the way you do it is the sport and class predictions. And then uh, then collapse finally the Atma and Anatma also because Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya are two sides of the, the same coin. There is only the Brahma Satyam part. So that, that part totally helped. Just to add to this, Krishna, um, you know, Satya Sai Baba used to say uh, the mathematical equation 3 minus 1 is equal to 1. Okay? So what he would actually say is 
when you are standing in front of a mirror there is you there is the mirror and there is the reflection on the mirror right you remove the mirror there is only one ah uh, beautiful yeah the the moment the mirror is removed the reflection and the person is one and the same i mean there is nothing there's no difference it just moves away beautiful so 3 minus 1 is equal to 1 beautifully said and actually on that note uh, one more thing um, could add so there is this brahman the original consciousness then there is this reflected consciousness that we think as the jivatma that is kind of powering us and then there is this mind through which we realize all these things so if we think about it the all the shastram the guru us we are all still the mithya world it's all still anatma the teaching what is teaching teaching is knowledge knowledge is vritti vritti is a thought that happens in the mind that also changes that is also an atma everything is mithya if you uh, think about it and so that's why what you kind of get as the moksham or the thought is also actually it's a karma phalam you have to think of it as like because of the thought this understanding comes but except here the path and the goal are the same and you kind of claim yourself as the subject so it's the same thing like a uh, uh, why why do we have to do all this completely in the mithya world because a dream is not a dream for the dreamer when he is in the dream so for them it's very very real so if you are in the mithya world only the mithya mind needs a mithya solution to the mithya problem conceived by oneself so that's why it all has to happen only in the same place and when you come out of it then there is nothing else to point to or describe that's why it becomes anirvachaniyam cannot be described and you only claim yourself as the uh, subject so when when we lot of the the various practices we try sometimes or about trying to negate some of this i'll make the body perfect or i'll try to make the mind perfect or my uh, all those various things uh, but this process of understanding the knowledge and claiming the knowledge has to happen in the mind as a conscious thought and it is the thought that actually flips the whole uh the whole equation so we, if we try to re- replace or remove one from the other you need all the thing you need the original consciousness the reflected consciousness and the mind to function together to claim it in the here and now otherwise uh various confusion could occur which is where it takes oh i am people could say i am in the bhakti marga and i will eventually go to swarga and something will happen or i am like in this ashtanga yoga path where i go to the sama samadhi nirvikalpa samadhi and something could happen or uh, yeah you you wait for some state to happen and that's not really needed you could you could claim while you are conscious and thinking with this thought aham brahmasmi that's a mahavakyam claiming that we should do and i think when the claim occurs it's important to recognize it's the self recognizing the self only the limitless can recognize the limitless the exactly. limited never becomes the limitless and what you shared also and somebody had posted from swami p where he talked about the fact where you will never become a free person it's freedom from the person and i think ajay that's very comforting we really don't have to make ourselves into a free person we have to just recognize we're already free and there is no alternative no fair point fair point is very well said and i think yeah i mean often you kind of say that and again i think the key question here is that how do i become free from this avarna right and uh, and that's kind of the whole concept that we said do karma yoga in the true sense to clean that sort of reflect you know to make sure that the original consciousness and the reflected consciousness are exactly the same uh, which it is but we just need to know this and so what can we do differently from our day to day activities or the achar is something we sort of as lately sort of started occupying my mind but that's kind of probably part of my evolution um but again I, the one thing which i kind of feel you know as i as we discuss this and the more we read about it bhakti yoga and gyana yoga being pretty much the same thing i mean in one you're kind of focused on the nirguna which is very difficult and so in the other one you're taking the the help of saguna or in ishtanam or pratik or pratima or whatever right but the goal is is the same and you know eventually ishwara will kind of get you to that point of kyana in any case right 
And so in some ways, I mean, this whole debate that has always been in my mind that whether I'm I going to follow Kyano Yoga or Bhakti Yoga is a bit irrelevant because both effectively are, you know, I used to say they lead to the same thing, but now I'm like, they are the same thing, right? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Yep. That's why I think, I the, think guru, uh, the guru is the bridge. You know, the guru represents both. He is giving you the knowledge, but he is the Lord. And believing the guru, taking the guru at his word, unites bhakti and yanam. Absolutely. That's very well said, uh, Rick. The guru plays a very critical role in this whole, whole thing. And I think, again, I think this whole satsang and just talking to each other and learning from each other is is just super. So thank. I think, I think sadhana, thank sadhana you. plays a very important role, no? So in the sense, uh, you need to train your mind to sort of go inward, and therefore uh, sadhana is uh, very critical in this transition of keeping the self, you know, occupied with spiritual thoughts, right? So I think that's one point. Uh, interestingly, you know. <clears throat> um, when I was reading this thing, note of Krishna saying, where am I? Um, you know, I was reading another book on uh, Vedanta by Swami Tejo Mayananda. And he was saying that, um, he says, for any journey uh, to start, you need to know where you are. So I was very interested when I read that line, I said, I'm going to listen to Krishna's lecture today. <laughs> right. So let, let me figure out where it is. And then he goes on to say, the journey starts from where I am. Okay. And the journey in spirituality culminates when I know who I am. Okay. And he says the path from A to B, this transition from where am I to who am I is the spirit of inquiry, you know, uh, where you start to, you know, sort of look at things. So I thought that was very nicely said. And I was eagerly looking for this. Thanks, Krishna. I think uh, you made our day. Oh, and beautiful. wonderful presentation. And I think, uh, please share, I think looking forward to doing a lot of smaranam, mananam and nididhyasanam on the topic because it is not so, you know, in the sense, while it is good to listen to you and, you know, and see the passion, but uh, one needs to assimilate. I think uh, I would definitely want to go through this again. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. So, 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 quick question. When you said we need to do sadhana, do you yeah. mean uh, shravanam, mananam, or something else? Yeah, anything. I mean, in the sense, uh, like, I'm just coming back to the smart Sarveshu Kale issue, right? So if you really want to look at, even the Bhagavad Gita says that uh, it's important for you to, he says, you know, this is very difficult. Mind is very difficult to control. You know, we talk about sense control, mind control. And then when Arjuna says, hey, you know, this is so difficult to control. He said, yes, yes, it is very difficult to control. Then how do I do it? Abhyasena kaunteya. You know, that Abhyasena has to come through sadhana only, right? How else would you do? You say, no, no, and yeah. yeah, I get that. I mean, I, I just meant that, you know, it's not like doing some sort of, I mean, is it, I mean, I'm trying to kind of differentiate between sort of doing something like a japa or something versus... No, anything. I think everything think adds right, yeah. to the journey, right? It's every step at time, right? It's a, it's a journey of a million steps or a, whatever steps it is. I mean, for uh, somebody like Parikshit, it only took seven days. I mean, we have one other week to actually improve from where we are today. <laughs> depends so on, hopefully... It depends on how it defined that week. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. So... So that's good. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So there, there's a the funny way Swamiji says is uh, that like Vedanta, like the Veda Purva, and even sometimes the Upanishad will get into all this debates about how the universe was created and how all these things came about and all those various explanations. But those are all kind of, again, still given only to the beginner students because we are very curious where we came from, what's happening around, what will happen, how to explain all those things. But once, once you have quenched enough of your questions, kind of the, the important step is to keep keep moving forward because like the, the Upanishad, various places will say various things. One will say, Sadeva Saumya Idamagra Asit. Everything came from Sad, Sandogya Upanishad. And then Taitri Upanishad, where Asadeva Idamagra Asit. Like Asad was the first thing that and Sad Jayata, from that Sad was born. And it's like told for different students by different gurus, ancient rishis and seers, uh, with different thing to kind of culminate. But for us, it's like not important to keep dwelling on, on that uh, more and more. Like as I said, come from there. Like I, I like the way uh, Rick put it in his uh, presentation. Like anything that's anatma is garbage. You don't need to necessarily sort them all clearly and to figure out every single answer to that solution. 
uh, and that was like a very big relief for me mentally as well is like you don't have to solve every one thing like again karma yoga 100% sadhana chatushte sampatti 100% and so on you don't need to do that you just need to know enough to go and that happens only with the guru shraddha and bhakti just keep propelling yourself what's next what's next what's next and then sometimes it comes to the stage claim it invalidate all the rest then why do you then why do you even worry about all the other stories that saying and then uh, swami ji says also the shastra and krishna says people are so eager to believe the veda purva because we are so used to uh, thinking that we have to do something to get something to relay something so when 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 we are doing karma when we are reading when we are doing all these things we feel we are doing something we will achieve something in return so the veda purva gives you all these various karmas and pujas and upasanas and so thing we 100% believe this actually even the shastra say it cannot be proved that there is a swargam nobody has come from that swargam and saying hey i went to swargam i came back this is how it is now it's my rebirth nobody can say that we happily believe in all this punarjanma and i want to accumulate punyam and do all this but the vedanta which is the real truth you are that that truth is the the, the only message finally it's been getting to but we refuse to claim it we refuse to believe that oh no 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 it cannot be this simple i need to do all these various other things and only then i am really qualified to claim it or become it understand it or so on so we kind of keep postponing and so i'll probably end with this so uh, guru says uh, like i said the 1% who seriously try to be in nidhyasnam binary format the biggest guru dakshina that uh, can be given is if you say i am in nididhyasnam i want to be in binary format as much as possible i will look at everything as atma and atma with that and i am striving to be in binary format and when you say that uh, you are claiming moksha and like postponement of moksha is the worst thing that you can do and uh, krishna and various upanishads will all like deride this person look at them they are way and like it becomes the words become harsher and harsher They're wasting time in karma yoga wasting time in upasana yoga please god help them <laughs> then god has to give them the guru guru has to give them the shastram and then they have to get the atma kripa to claim it so uh, so the, the biggest guru dakshina we can actually give to our gurus is to not postpone moksha claim it claim it as soon immediately if possible and then strive to be in the binary format with all the other techniques uh, that's that's been uh, taught so I think we we are just about two minutes to it. Or if there are no questions, we can probably say a prayer and stop the recording. And then sure. if we want, I'll keep the Zoom thing alive, and then we can. If somebody wants to keep discussing, we can do in the spirit of finishing it in time. Okay, I'll chant a prayer, and then we will stop it, and then we'll keep it open. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Naat Pur Namuda Chyate. पूर्णस्य पूर्णम आदाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू कृष्णा थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच हरि ओं कृष्णा आई आई स्टॉप द रिकॉर्डिंग ओ हियर या सॉरी वन सेकंड uh stop